All right, so I'm sitting here again with Mark Linnell. Mark, how are you today? Great. Yeah, doing all right? Yeah, I haven't had a lot of sleep to be quite You tired. do. I, I'm going to admit <laughs> you do look a little bit tired. It, it, so it's good to know the VCs actually get tired. Yeah, I mean, I think like when before you get this job, you think that it's like Shark Tank. And you just sit there, and everyone just comes to you. I assume you're just sitting on a on a perch, just uh, just saying no to people just left drinking, and right. Yeah, drinking coffee and water, but yeah, no, it's you have to chase stuff, deal with legal, deal with contracts, founder meltdowns, so uh, other VC meltdowns, juicy, juicy. So <laughs> did you did you have a meltdown this week? Was that was there a big meltdown? No, I'm just saying that that could be a, a time suck, uh, but it's the job think of a VC to be an ear, whether it's like a personal problem that they're going through. Walk, walk us through your week. Like what happened? Let's see. What like, or give us a day, like a day this week. Like what are you, like yesterday? Like walk me through your day yesterday. Like why was it crazy? Uh, let's see. Um, so doing diligence on a few companies, trying to, because of the, the time allocation, it's, I'm trying to actually onboard uh, and figure out how to onboard a uh, an intern. Um, so thinking about how to case the intern and how much time he should be spending. And then there are a few companies I talked with about their next financing round. So, you know, you do all that, you put all that together. And then I, and I had to go to an event, I had to go to another event tonight, but going to like an event or meet up after work for example at the end of the day you're like wow it's already 11 p.m and so so all right so it sounds like there's a diligence component to what you're doing like you're checking into companies you're following up making sure to see if like this is going to happen like if you're going to seal the deal yeah with so somebody. checking yeah so diligence in terms of are we going to make an investment or not taking initial calls so if i take more than four of those per day then that really leaves me only with like less than half the day to actually do real other work, right? Because like each meeting is like an hour or so. What what is a VC's real work? <laughs> <laughs> Zing, yeah, yeah. Um, so the I think for me the real work is getting. I I heard you know it's super interesting. I heard this one, one of my friends. He's a VC as well, and he was like. You should you need, to, you need to be spending more time with your founders and not other people's founders, not other VCs founders. And I was like, that's so enlightening. You're right. So all like the I'm trying to get like a bunch of things from my the companies that we've already invested in on like how to help them. So so spending time with I mean it because for every deal that you say yes to, you've probably said no to I don't know, I'm guessing like three, four hundred, five hundred. Yeah, maybe like yeah, it's like it's like a two percent. Right. Like yeah. Right. Yeah. So like if you've already chosen them, then the idea is you should be spending your time with them. Yeah. Exactly. Because it's probably a better investment of your time than to keep spending time looking at all of these ninety-eight percent of companies that don't mean anything to you. Yep. Exactly. But at the same time, you have to be. It's just such an interesting job because you have to be um, founder friendly, and at the same time. These new, you never know when the next, where the next new deal is going to come from, and you should be respectful to a founder because they're putting their, putting everything on the line, uh, and trying just trying to raise money, and you know we're obviously at a easier position because we get a salary, and we, yeah, we we also get we have investors, but um, we're not, you know, I'm not involved with like raising my own fund yet. I've never done that, so, but I guess I'll I'll probably know what that feels like if I ever do raise my own my own fund. But yeah. Are you going to raise your own fund? Yeah, uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. So, so Yeah, we'll see. So it's it sounds like half your day is spent like chasing deals, half your day is spent like managing your existing deals. Mm -hmm. And then you're you're spending time like looking out for new stuff, like being friendly, being part of the network, sitting down with chance bending. Yep. It's exactly. all part of the game. It's all it's all part of the game. Yeah. Uh, and then and a lot of the time is reading and talk and reading up on current trends. Uh, I spend so much time on Twitter; it's crazy. Uh, is that is that your tool of choice, Twitter, right now? Um, it's one of. I mean, I use Twitter. Um, follow a lot of interesting people. There's obviously a lot of email subscriptions that I, I 
you know, that I have in my inbox um, and just need to read what's going on. And then I look at business news because uh, I kind of want to understand what's going on, you know, macro, macro wise. When you say that, does, does that mean tech news or does that mean like world news, like Trump news? Sort of stuff? <laughs> it's a little bit of both, but I, I would say skewed more tech news. Yeah. But we have to read more, we have to know what's going on, right? Like socially, that's, we're kind of in, in investing in things that, uh, that are on the brink of uh, a change in consumer behavior. So it's important to read the other stuff. So, so when you're, when you're scouting, is it, would you call it scouting Twitter? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny because Twitter does in a way, if they see an interesting company, I will like DM the, uh, the entrepreneur on Twitter, but I'm also seeing like other VCs are, are tweeting and, you know, VCs like to show how big the, their brains are. So they're always putting like interesting thought pieces. Oh, so on this Twitter. is a competition with other VCs. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's what Twitter actually is. Yeah. VCs love to talk about how smart they are. Right. And they are all really smart. So like, you know, um, and I think that's how you differentiate your, your capital. You have to kind of show that you have uh, an, enough analytic rigor and um, to make an investment and help an investment and know what's going on in the world. So, yeah, um, that is a lot of the day, though. Ha, have, you, have you ever thought about growing your own audience? I know that some of the, the my favorite VCs really try to use their, their audience now as a differentiator. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, my friend Howard Lenzen, for instance, he can help make a, a company pop. Yeah, he's you know, super if, smart. It, yeah, he's smart, but like he also has a pretty big audience. Yeah. So if you need a couple hundred beta users, for instance, he can just you know blast out a message, and then there you go. Yeah, and that's the thing about being a, you know, I think there's I think this does exist in every industry though. There's always like a, like a, like key opinion leaders, right? And the goal for me is like, would love to be a, a key opinion leader one day, but, um, yeah. I think by being a VC, you're kind of already there because you have that, the ability to invest. And I think people look at you that way. So yeah, it's like interesting. It's, I think a lot of VCs talk about imposter syndrome. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so I think I kind of have that. I think a lot of VCs have that. But yeah, I'm being super open on this right now. <laughs> that, I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I know for me... I have imposter syndrome all the time. And I think it's an interesting line. Like it's, it, there's a balance. Like I'm trying to portray myself as a smart guy and I'm, I, I'm out there and I have opinions. At the same time, I'm also trying to say, I don't know shit. And have that attitude because that's the way you learn. Yeah. And like when you're humble, like great things happen. So it's a strange line that you have to walk. And I think the VCs, uh, for the most part, don't walk it very well. Like they end up just trying to look too smart. And so what I really appreciate about you is like, I feel like you just, you, that doesn't actually bother you that much. Like I, I don't see you like trying to be Fred Wilson right mm, now. Yeah, you know? exactly. I mean, I haven't been in the game as long as he has and don't have the uh, the exits that he's had and things like that. But that'd be awesome to be there one day. Have guys like Mark Schuster given you advice? No, I do read his blog though. It's just, it is he is very thoughtful. Um, I think there's some VCs I talk to up north that do give me advice. Yeah, and I think I need to develop more of that. There's like a that's pretty interesting, by the way. There's like a I heard there's like a new program for for VC mentoring, and it's like mentoring diverse uh, VCs because there's not a lot of um, diversity in venture capital. And you can apply to this program and like get paired up with like a top tier VC, which I think would be awesome. I think it's a when when do you think this is a good question for you? When when do you feel like VC is going to get disrupted, like itself, right? Like love to talk about disruption. Uh, they love to invest in disruption. When does VC get, you know, really disrupted? I don't know. You know why? Because I think even with crypto and sorry, I laughed there, but even yeah, with, are you? Yeah. Uh, do you have any crypto deals? Yeah, we're well, before I came on, we're in one. Did you lead it? No, no, it, no. It was, I, before. it was before it was I came before on, but like I haven't made a crypto deal like like myself. Um, but you know, we thought Angelus would be it. It wasn't the case, and we thought crypto crypto would be it. It's maybe the case. I don't know, but the thing is, it's based on like all private networks too, and I, I don't, I, that's that's really hard to to dislodge. You know? Yeah, it seems like it seems like to me like there's there's this emerging space 
for companies that like they're they're not you know they're they're not vc side like they're not looking for like a vc sort of like an uber like outcome Mm -hmm. at the same time they're more than uh what's deemed as a lifestyle business yeah yeah and and so it seems like there's something in between and something interesting is happening in the in in that particular little niche yeah did did you read that one article that came out uh, yeah yeah that one that came out a few weeks ago vc yeah yeah do you think that has legs i think so because I think if you're if you're a certain size fund, I don't think you're looking for the next Uber. You're not looking for a company to be. It's great, but you know, you, maybe you're not looking for a 500x return on something. Maybe you're looking at like a bunch of safer businesses that could exit for five to six x, which is good. But I, I'm not sure if like VCs consider that like a home run because VC is like like a power law game, right? Like like two companies. Yeah, and I also yeah. think there's like a. Um, there's a an emerging group of people, especially here in Los Angeles, like well-known celebrities, athletes, and others, where they have money. They have money to invest in these deals. They also have audience. They also can like help make a deal pop. Mm-hmm. And so the speed, the speed is also interesting. Like these companies are blowing up faster than ever before. Yeah. But like maybe not on like an Uber level, like not like these giant massive ecosystems, yeah. but like really interesting companies all the same. So I think that the speed at which uh, the money comes in, the celebrities and the different people get attached or mo- people with money that can make things happen. And I think that might be its own ball game. Yeah. Here totally. in 2019, 2020. Yeah, totally. I think that one article, that New York Times article is a, and like the indie VC stuff is testament to that. Um and there is a lot of, I guess, interesting angel money going to, into certain deals. Like I, I, had, I do see a lot of companies more so now that come into my inbox, and I'm like, not really for us. Not sure if this is VC, but you're like profitable, you know? Which yeah, is like, they're making money, they're which they're is rare. Money. Yeah, rare, yeah, right? it's they're super money. rare. Yeah, but uh, on a kind of interesting point here, uh, you know, speaking of like trends. Uh, this like influencer as a brand or it like it's like working a lot and I'm seeing a lot more of it actually happen in in the VC space like for example I think Lightspeed invested in a in a company that's kind of led by Lady Gaga do you know what I'm talking about yeah yeah what is that thing called I don't know um yeah. we'll, we'll look it up and put yeah. it in, in uh, the notes on this one yeah and then there's um there's other similar deals like uh, there's like I think one's called Brandable that 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 Lightspeed did where these influencers are they're making their own products and they have distribution through Walmart and uh, supposedly it's doing pretty well. It's like you know that 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 stuff is like working in this day and age. Yeah, I I totally agree. I think that there I'm so bullish on that. I'm yeah. so bullish on that because at the end of the day you you've got to you have to have the ability to make noise and and reach an audience and and that's harder than ever and yet you have these people that are capable of doing it and they need to take a greater and greater uh, ownership percentage of what they're pitching and selling yeah and that's interesting right because the economics weren't there before for them mm-hmm. they were just getting like an endorsement fee yeah and now it's totally different now they own it and they're becoming smarter i think in 10 years like a lot of these people like we don't think of talent as business people, but I think over the year, like the years to come, I think it will just become part of your DNA. Like you're able to do both. Somehow. Yeah. Yeah. That's the evolution. I really think that. Yeah. I think the internet definitely enabled that because before you had to, you know, get physical real estate, do all this other stuff, spend money on advertising, expensive advertising that you had no ROI on. Now you have like a social media manager and there's all this stuff. You have podcasts. Right? I tell, it's like yeah. crazy. Yeah. I tell everybody, I think of myself as a business person first and foremost, and then I'm a content creator. But that's no excuse in 2019 for me not to put out really, really good content. Like I, I just somehow have to figure out how to do both. And I'm trying my ass off to get better at the content piece because you just it's, it's not an excuse to be like, I'm a business guy. Like it just doesn't work that way anymore. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot going on in the content space. And, um, you know, for, for me, since, since we're looking at media – media and tech, intersection of media and tech, like always looking at what's going on. What are people pitching you like in the last few weeks? Like what are you seeing a lot of? Good question. So have been seeing a lot in music. 
surprisingly, a lot in voice and audio. Uh, just generally, general the the audio um, is the audio trend is definitely there. Um, have also, and I think that's because of the you know the smart speaker and podcasts, like you know the the, the the Spotify news recently that maybe I'm just like noticing more of that. Um, have also been seeing a lot of, it's, you know, you and I were talking about this earlier. We've been seeing a lot of interesting private network, private networks, and I'm actually going to write about this. I think there's an interesting. Um, where where do you write for so for people listening and watching? Uh, I probably write on Medium or something. All right, yeah. all right. So go oh. find Mark now on Medium. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of VR stuff in there right now because that's kind of what I started with, but. There's, I've been seeing a lot of companies basically create their own private network and whether that's physical or online uh, based on special interest groups. I think we did talk about this last time I was here, but I'm seeing way more of it in other things I you know, didn't even think of that I would be seeing. And I think there's an overall trend that I want to write on about the evolution. People are evolving from, from the timeline or from the Instagram story into like private niche groups, um, that's super interesting to me. Yeah, I'm I'm all about that right now. I'll say it again. I feel like uh, private groups is where everything is happening right now. Mm -hmm. You'd be crazy. I, like, I think being an individual on the internet, I think we're gonna look back and be like, wow, the first 25 years of the internet were all about being an individual, and moving forward, it's going to be about small groups and like your clan, right? Like, if we look at these video games. Like you have a clan like yep. that. And, and I think we're going to see more and more of those. I mean, that's why chance bending, you know, we're building different entrepreneur networks and so forth is like, it's this idea that you have to move in a pack. And when you move in a pack, then you obviously have uh, more power. Uh, you can get things to happen. You have people of your own kind that you can help each other. You have mm -hmm. each other's back. And I think you're going to see that across every interest group known to man. Yeah. And, and that's probably how, you know, don't want to go into like, evolution but like you know like it's humans probably for and in, in packs that's how they traveled and yeah when i this is embarrassing but uh a uh, shout out to kevin donahue this kevin donahue was the very first business development person youtube ever hired back before they were acquired by google really great guy really smart guy um, i was trying to convince kevin donahue back in 2008 that this was the future of the internet and that i wanted to try to get a screenplay written where basically on the internet you start, you know, geography doesn't matter in the future and that people would start to vote based on their interest group. So you wouldn't vote in a state, you wouldn't vote in a country. It would be, you would actually be voting on the internet based on your interest group. And of course that has a lot of ramifications because that, you know, that's who you define yourself as. Anyways, of course in my screenplay madness ensued, uh, good thing that thing was never written because it's probably <laughs> terrible. But, but I, I I do think this is the long term direction of the the internet. Yeah, and um, yeah, to me that's I have to look out for that type of stuff and I have to read about that stuff. And I and I and I think I definitely wasn't the first one thinking about it because I want to say I read something recently on it that was really well put together. What type of groups are you seeing? Are you seeing anything you can you can name yeah. off, the, off your um, head? Looking at, I've seen entrepreneur groups. I've seen artist groups. I've seen mother groups. I've seen working mother groups. Seen pure female groups, special interest groups around video games, um, and the most obvious one of that is like is a uh, Discord is the big one. But not like I saw that one. But I'm just saying, you know, seeing different things like that. Um, those are the most, I think those are the most obvious ones. I've, I've been seeing multiple of, of each. Yeah. Yeah. And and I think that as we see the subscription business model continue to, to grow on the internet and just ultimately is going to take over everything, like it just, it goes right in line with that idea, which is uh, when you're part of a special interest group, you're like, in essence, you're paying dues, mm -hmm. right? Like, like if you're part of the, I don't know, like back in the day, like the Lions group, like these, these like groups of men you paid dues or quarterly dues or like country club dues. Yeah. And I and I and I think that subscription lends itself very well to that. Are you a member at Soho House, by the way? Or I am not a member of Soho either. House. I, I I mean <laughs> I go there quite a bit because yeah. everyone likes to invite you up there. And yeah. I I enjoy myself. Um I don't feel special there. 
Yeah. But I do have a good time there. Yeah, well, I mean, you look at the wing and the riveter, it's almost, it's like a pretty similar model, it, but it's for, for females, right? Um, so to me, and I think there's like a, not even a startup that's doing it, but there's another, there's a real estate developer out here in West Hollywood that bought some building to have. Heard about that. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. It's like not a VC back thing, but. Yeah. I, I think you could also argue that WeWork is that totally. as well, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, totally is. Totally is. I, I'm not sure. I, I personally, I, I mean, I'm probably too old for the WeWork uh, <laughs> demographic, but like, I don't think that's cool at all. Um, but I do think it, obviously, they're generating a lot of reoccurring revenue and can think of themselves in this in this way. Yeah, they have a really interesting network and they do put on events so that people can meet each other. And, you know, right now there's spaces and there's another one. I forgot what it was called. It's like industrial or something like that. That's some big real estate uh, companies put money into. It's a venture-backed business as well. And I'm like, or industrious. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, but they're all like, yeah, mid-century modern furniture, hip, cool companies. Like, yeah, I think that will be the challenge. Is like for e-commerce, like, do you really want to belong to like a mid-century furniture group? Like that—that <laughs> that is the challenge yeah. for them. And and so I think it will be interesting to see how people define themselves. Like, what level? Like, maybe someone who likes mid-century furniture is part of a higher level of people that feel they're. I don't know, design conscious. Yeah. And so you would be part of a design conscious uh, group. But it'll be interesting to see how people self-organize. Yeah. Um, and seeing groups around plants, which I'm very interested in. Around plants. <laughs> I love plants, yeah. <laughs> I'm a plant person. I think one of the challenge one of the challenges I'm working through right now on this actually, and maybe you have advice is um, I've started a number of groups. I started Voice Entrepreneur as a Facebook group, has thousands of members on Facebook. That's for the voice community. It was really popular, one of the top ones. I've also started other groups. The challenge is I'm not sure any group works like online except for Facebook groups because of the way that the messages are threaded mm -hmm. because there's too much noise. Like, for instance, uh, I'm part of a WhatsApp group yeah. for the MBA, and it's too noisy, right? You get 10,000 messages in a night. You don't want to go through it all. It's tough to understand. I don't, it's just tough to, to keep track. Yeah. The trouble is I don't think anyone likes Facebook anymore. I don't think so either. People so so you have it. this major challenge where that thread thing works. However, Facebook sucks. Yeah. Um, and people are organizing on Slack, by the way. Yeah, Slack groups, right? Slack uh, Slack groups work. The trouble is, there's a it's there's just a high bar to like figure out how to get in. Yeah, like my mom, my mom's not gonna figure out how to yeah. get into Slack. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I wonder, didn't Yahoo have this like white label social network group that you could push on to any like member community? Yeah, like way back in the day. It's almost like maybe we need something like that with that kind of UI, but with better UI, with like Facebook level UI, right? I like that prediction that that a company emerges that does that yeah. very well. And and it, I think did you tell me this? But I I heard that Facebook is experimenting with paid groups. That was not me. Did you get pinged about that for any of your groups? I think if you run a big group, Facebook was like, "Do you want to test subscriptions on your group?" Really? That makes sense though, right? Like why right. not? They they should just take that rake and then. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely where this is going. However, yeah. again, I, I, I don't know anyone that wants to be caught dead on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, I still use it, but. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm bullish on Facebook. I own a lot of Facebook stock. <laughs> I do. Um, disclosure right there. I think that Facebook just, it's going to take two years, but like the newsfeed is dead and eventually they're going to get rid of that thing. And when they get rid of that thing, Facebook's going to become, when they integrate with Instagram and with WhatsApp and it becomes one thing, it's going to be really, really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. That's interesting news too, right? Where they're integrating other messaging services. Yeah. Right? It's going to be badass. This is what, P, this is why I own, I just keep buying Facebook stock, by the way. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I, so I, bullish. I bought some at the IPO and then when it dipped. Yeah. Yeah, and then so it's I guess, yeah, it's a good. It's, I guess it's a good hold, but yeah, because I, I think that the the whole thing there was like, is it going to be the next like MySpace, right? Right. Yeah, and it was the trouble is it, super, it, super sticky. Yeah, the the thing is, it's of course it's not going to be the next MySpace. Do you know how much data 
that they're sitting on. I know. Do you know that Google can't touch, like Google, the another unicorn, insane company, can't even touch Facebook in terms of the data they have. And so, if you're Facebook, it's you own the social graph. If you own the social graph, it's a monopoly. It's a monopoly that Congress can never understand. If you own the the, the social graph, you can just port that social graph onto. Right now, it's Instagram. Yeah, and WhatsApp, but you'll just put it on anything you want for the rest of the time. So we're talking a lot of, about about a lot of really interesting things here. Who, what? Who do you think is the next big thing if it's not Facebook? Because like now that these groups, because the way I'm seeing it is like groups are are dis are kind of disaggregating off of Facebook into these special interest groups, um, and no one entity owns every special instance. Yeah, yeah I, group, right? I, I'm, I'm of the belief from a macro sense that we're going to see a 20-year massive roll-up of subscription groups. And so on the top, you're going to have the Amazon bundle, you're going to have the Google bundle, and, you're, and you might be paying, I don't know, $200 a month, and you're going to have a whole suite of services, you're going to have content, you're going to have eyeglasses, you're going to have tires, you're, you're going to have everything under the sun and you're going to have to pick one of them. And uh, I think it's going to be super interesting. So from a, from a micro perspective, I see that these private groups are going to go out there. You're going to fund them as a VC. Mm-hmm. They're going to continue to grow. And then the bigger ones will continue to get rolled up. Uh, I, think, I, I just think that's the, the course of this. The, ev- all of them need to get rolled up. And so the tiny ones will even be part of the medium-sized ones, which will be part of the big ones. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Which makes me like kind of think now. I'm like, hmm, what what is where are there other opportunities to get in on this or to be investing outside? I guess outside of the monopoly, right? Um, something I did see, I have been seeing a lot of as it pertains to sound. I haven't, I've heard and read about a bunch of social networks over, but audio based. Have you? seen anything like that before audio based social networks yeah, i definitely I know. should know because that's my like area i don't I know how that it. would work though because i feel like you need like a visual cue to be like this is this person's status update but who knows maybe it could work out i mean i've definitely seen attempts i've seen yeah, lots yeah, of, attempts. of attempts yeah i don't think it makes a lot of sense right now yeah um i don't know man i i because <laughs> isn't that just kind of like a basically a series of, of like micro podcasts like in a way, right? Like, yeah, like, or, 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 it's basically visual voicemail. Yeah, I, I'm really, I'm really bullish. I feel like voice needs to get into the car, and and it is right now, to be clear. But once that's figured out in the next year or two, voice is going to explode in the next year or two through the car. And once that happens, and we can actually see people like learn how to quote unquote browse via voice mm-hmm. in the car like we don't have browsing right now like you don't browse with your with your amazon echo device yeah and someone needs to figure that out yeah, yeah. once once you learn browsing and that's going to be done in the car cuz you're going to be sitting there in 45 minutes of traffic in your commute and you're going to learn how to freaking talk to that thing i i'm still i still feel like someone needs to build this so the last company i saw before coming here was doing conversational marketing um and that's via voice and chatbots for artists and celebrities. And he's seeing some decent traction. Um, but I haven't experienced it myself. So th- to me, that's really interesting. If I could have a conversation with a, and not have to leave my house, I can go buy something. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean when you tell. Awesome. Like when in t- a car. Like, yeah. That cool. When you're yeah. listening to Tim Ferriss and Tim Ferriss is like, hey, man, for the next 20 seconds, I just want if say the magic word. Just say the magic word, everybody. That's what he says to his audience. And you're like, fine, Tim, I'll say it. Like, I'll buy the book. <laughs> right? And then that's how you buy Tim Ferriss's book. Right then and there, you're like driving the car and you say, I'll buy the book. And then that's how it, that's. Yeah, maybe that's like the, you know how Amazon in, innovated on the buy button? Like the one click to purchase? Like maybe this is like the, the one, the state yeah. of the purchase thing. Um, yeah. You have to have context in order to buy something. That's why it doesn't work right now with, with Amazon devices. Like, you have to know why to buy it. If you just throw a bunch of shit on there, like, you have no idea. Like, Amazon 
you can buy anything in the world on Amazon. You have to know why you want to buy it. The second you know why, it becomes interesting. If Tim Ferriss tells me to go buy some vitamins, I'm gonna be like, cool. I I want to buy these vitamins because Tim Ferriss told me to. Yeah, that's and that's he's another person that I I subscribe to his to his email newsletters, but and, and I I have a few that I need to go through. I'm a, I'm a couple weeks behind, but yeah, I like his content too. Really smart awesome. dude. Yeah, super uh, smart he guy. was my boy back in the day, actually. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were we were pretty good friends. I haven't talked to him in a few years, but uh, great guy. And uh, what I like about him is he just he always knew. Like I was friends with him right when Four Hour Work Week came out. He just knew that there was a path for him because I was like, "Are you, what are you gonna do? are you gonna be a self improvement guy?" And he was sort of like, "You know what? I just sort of feel like there's a path for me just to be myself." Mm. and that's I'm, cool yeah it was really cool I, I was impressed by that yeah he he, he definitely tapped in tapped uh, you know he tapped into that but do you think he really works only four hours a week no that's <laughs> <laughs> no he works four hours per four hours so. <laughs> uh, I, I would I would love to figure out how to how to work um to work more efficiently so I have been spending my time in like productivity tools like not to invest in but just personally like what can i be doing besides what's your pick for the audience it's gonna sound so lame but i have a an excel spreadsheet that i'm like i make like weekly to-do lists on it and i over- that that exciting new tool called microsoft excel <laughs> yeah well everyone's using todoist or some or some other stuff like yeah. trello i'm like yeah. i just use excel and i have three criteria like not started in progress or done yeah and that's how that's how I that's how I manage my stuff. I love it. I use Google Keep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, have, you know that one? Yeah, I've heard of it. Um, I don't use it because I have a. Do you have an? Do you have an iPhone? I have an iPhone. I still yeah. like Keep. Uh, it just works for me. Okay, so. cool. I have like random ideas. I don't sleep well because I I'm an idea sort of. So in the middle of the night, it's I found it's the easiest app to just quickly type a message and then it like keeps it the way you want it. To yeah, a lot of people yeah. have been telling me about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, so. Just, just, just been kind of seeing a lot in in the in the audio and voice space, which is like really interesting. And then this like private community space as well. Um, still following a bunch of stuff in VR. I don't know if you, did you see the recent like Hololens news? Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Have you have you tried Hololens too? No, I'm I'm excited about it though. Yeah, it seems it seems a lot better. Yeah. Um, field of vision. Yeah, the field of vision is bigger uh, or wider, and I. I kind of think I'm more bullish now on VR and immersive again. Um, my friends recently had a birthday party at a Two Bit Circus. Do you know? What yeah, I'm talking of course. About? To, to describe Two Bit Circus to everybody, uh, Two Bit Circus is it's almost like an arcade, but a techie a techie version of an arcade. Think of Chuck E. Cheese for adults, but su- um, there's like a robot. That serves drinks and there's like VR games. It's I think run by the uh, Atari's yeah Atari's yeah. founder's son yeah yeah. Uh, no, well, that was the, Nolan no, Bushnell. I think it's Nolan Bushnell or something yeah. like that. One of the Bush, one of the Bushnell brothers, and they're and uh, I've met uh, Tyler. He's cool from awesome. Yeah, uh, he has like a one of his. He's starting a company too, but it's really interesting because it was packed. It was a very diverse group set and um my friends who aren't in tech are like hey uh you know a lot about the space when's when when is a vr headset coming out that i should buy like i think it kind of might ha- or, the nice thing is that they're educating the market at least the local yeah. market here on it yeah uh, i'm going to be we're actually doing a chance bending vr episode tomorrow i'm going to be sitting down with jeremy Welt. do you know jeremy no who's that he was the guy he did a whole bunch of vr uh through walmart uh the last few oh, years yeah, yeah. really really smart guy he was one of the original maker studios he was like the original like head of marketing oh, cool. for maker studios back in the day super smart dude uh good friend of mine we chop it up we experiment on stuff together and I think he has a bunch of really interesting ideas is, in this space. Is he no longer at Walmart? No. He, right now, he, he recently left, and he's uh, working on new stuff. So I'm excited to see what he has, what he has going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally like, I, I love that idea that in um, Fortnite, you know, that was basically VR. There's oh, just the no Google. Yeah, the Marshmallow, that is oh, VR, that is, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that is VR. So 
That seems interesting. I do. I'm like you. I'm sort of thinking like VR is going to happen, but it's not going to happen exactly the way we want it to happen. Yeah. Just like straight goggles. I think it's just sort of emerging of all of these ideas that we're talking about. I know for me, like we haven't even talked. Live streaming is just popping right now. Oh yeah, like more so than before. It's so natural. It's so man. People are spending money through it. People are feeling comfortable. Like even my dad figured it out like recently. What What was your dad? Well, using? I mean, my I mean, my dad wasn't was using like. Uh, a telephone answering machine like my dad is ancient and finally he figured out facetime which i know sounds like not a big deal but it's like just like a very natural progression like and i feel like people now feel really comfortable talking to people Mm -hmm. through video and through live stream and so um, i'm just so bullish there all of a sudden yeah and i think we're we we don't talk about it as much because it sort of feels like it's just part of what we're doing Mm -hmm. but it just seems like to me it's accelerating right now yeah definitely uh, I'm very bullish on the space. Obviously, I think I mentioned that we were part of Beta Works Live Camp. But I know. I yeah, know. I'm so, jealous. I'm jealous. On yeah, that. so there's a lot of interesting things going on. It's it's weird. Uh, I'm not a millennial. I guess I am technically a millennial, but like my younger friends will they'll like just straight up like Facetime each other, and I'm not like totally okay with doing that in public yet but some people are i've no I've, i'm glad you brought this up <laughs> i feel like people are comfortable in like just in the last like six months people are just facetiming like out in public all the fucking time yeah it, it's I'm, I'm seeing a lot of it's people, a thing people are facetiming and i'm like they're facetiming and they see traffic behind them and like they, they don't really care it's- my mother-in-law facetimes out at dinner oh, it's so funny isn't that crazy i i guess it's on what, what do you what do you think what do you think is what it, what prohibits you from from picking up a FaceTime call? Because I always like decline all of them. What prevents me? I mean, I'm not trying to toot my horn. I, now that I have this audience through chance bending, I get so many weirdos. <laughs> so like, I I have to make sure that I'm careful about about who I talk to and who I don't talk to. Okay. Because I, I'll get weird people that will want to pitch me from India for like an hour and a half on, you know, some something crazy. Well, yeah. Well, because interesting, because I was talking with with a company, and there's a few companies in this space. But I think last time I was here, we talked about avatars, right? So yeah. imagine, I wonder if I had if I had an avatar up that the other person saw, and I would be okay with FaceTiming. I know there's something very personal personal about it, and the thing is, I do pick up for certain people, but not for everybody. But is there a way to do it for everyone? Because it is like a cool like engaging experience right yeah avatars do need some work where like you just like i they, i don't i'm not sure that they have to look realistic you just have to sort of be individual right because if you always knew it was me then i think you'd be comfortable with my avatar you'd be like oh yeah that's ben when i talked to ben on facetime he looks like a half monkey half alien or whatever yeah yeah is, but, you know? but like that, that has you. to be me yeah and no one else can be can be that yeah, but it, yeah, and that's and that's funny you 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 mentioned that scenario because back in the day was like we were just remember like on on AOL Instant Messenger, it's like you had this like picture, yeah, and that was like your avatar. It was like a stupid yeah. picture and this status whatever a, a perpetual status update that was there. Yeah, right. Yeah, and like is live streaming that allows you to have a dynamic avatar in a way and. I think I'd be more open to talk to people if I had an avatar, like to talk to anybody. Yeah, yeah. And as know. long as I knew it was you, like, like that's the thing about a face. Like when I see your face, I, I know it's you and only you. Yeah. Right? I, you can't have anyone copy your avatar. Yeah, that's so I'm 100% looking at this space. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm like, is there an opportunity or is there a world that we exist that I have a digital representation of myself and then I have you know, for everyone else that I meet online or via electronic means in the world, and do I, and do I just reserve my my real self for people I know in real life? Like taking off your clothes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I just, I'm just thinking about that, and I, and I think about that weird stuff all the time. Um, it's, in, it's in my dope, day, man. yeah, because I, I'm, I'm thinking about all this little Michaela stuff, and I'm, I'm like, that's awesome, but is it? Like how how does everyone else benefit from it besides being like a virtual celebrity? Yeah, I don't I don't know. I I, I still <laughs> I feel like it's just not there yet. But yeah. I get I get it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just some thoughts right there. Yeah. Well, I 
Mark, I, I hate to cut this short, but I've I've got to run. I've got yeah, we're interviewing a new uh a new person here at Chance Bennett. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting, man. We're growing. So uh yeah. So so for people that are curious, where can they find you again? Uh you mean my email address? No, not your email. Well, if you want to give your email, but I mean like your medium or your Twitter or your Instagram. Like what how do you want people to follow oh, you? Oh, uh, um I'm at Mark A. Lanau on Twitter. Yeah, I would be yeah, if I could grow my Twitter account, just plug it there. Yeah. All right. Mark awesome. A. Lanau. Yeah. L I N A O. Yeah. And I'm not like every other Twitter person I actually use capital letters. This man is a VC with heart. <laughs> this man is a VC who actually uh, is just a sweet, sweet kind of. I'm a, I'm a contrarian VC. A contrarian VC. <laughs> a little panda bear. Um, Mark, let's do this again. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having All me. All right, man. man. All right. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.